you know, start with the prayers and then we'll go into the session. Om Ajnana Timirandasya Jnanangana Shalakaya Chakshuram Militam Yena Tasmai Shri Guru Venam Namo Om Vishnu Padaya Krishna Prashtaya Bhutale Shrimate Bhaktivedanta Swami Tinamaya Namaste Saraswati Deva Kauravani Pracharine Nirvishesh Shunyavadi Pashyati Veshadarine Jai Shri Krishna Chaitanya Tamo Nityananda Shri Advaita Gadadhar Shri Vasadiga Aurabhakta Vrinda Hare Krishna Hare Krishna 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 Hare 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 Ram Hare Ram 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 Hare Hare Because today uh, we are talking about real identity we will be discussing existence of soul seeing the soul bodies let us see let us just recap quickly you know what we did in the first session just you know so that we are on the, on the same page so we discussed what is common between human beings and animals which is sleeping eating enjoying and defending what is the difference uh, which you know set apart human beings a b c d which is ability to inquire or higher inquiry b is for bliss c was for choice we can make choices D is for determination to do A, B, C. Then we discuss the problems of, of life and you know we concluded in some sense that what are the real problems which was birth, old age, disease and death. Y is for actually Yamaraj here. And there are three other problems which were uh, problems caused by one's own mind and body. Then problem caused or you know miseries caused by other living beings and lastly was natural disturbances then we also discussed how the temporary solutions of this world are not helping which is sense gratification or scientific advancement then we discussed about the mental tricks mental speculation and then you know the superficial religious rituals those you know will not help then we also discussed what Bhagavad Gita has to say about this world, which is Dukkhalayam as Ashwatam. So this place is where you get miseries. So expecting happiness in this place uh, will be wrong. And then finally we discussed what is the solution for all this. It is connecting back to our father God that will you know only give us the real happiness. And that was the permanent solution to all our pro real problems. Now, today, we want to know who am I? So let us, you know, just do a quick, you know, uh, poll among ourselves and, you know, please try and participate uh, in this that, uh, okay, now, so I'm just launching this poll so that you all actually can immediately respond to that so the question actually is what do you think about this statement the body is a biological machine and it stops when the cells fail to regenerate you have three options you can choose Okay, so you got 14, 15 responses already. Four or five people, yes, they are responding. I think, yeah, the consensus seems to be saying that there is definitely another life beyond death. And there is a small, you know, population which is saying we live only this one life. And that makes sense. Uh, and I think some people are saying maybe. Okay, I think... Uh, few people couldn't participate in the poll that's okay i think so so, so we, we we know where we stand right ideally you know in, a, in an open situation we would actually discuss more that people who are uh, who are more you know who are saying no 
I think they would basically. So in, anybody who who is saying no can can they basically give the justification why they feel that there is life beyond you know death? Anybody wants to speak about it? So these are the results of our poll. But sorry, yeah. Okay, so let us maybe ask people who said yes to this statement that uh, the reason for choosing yes, it seems, is the science. Is that right? I don't know who will actually have said yes, so I can't you know take names, but. No debate. Okay. So I think we know a little bit now. Let's move on. I think the whole discussion will be about this anyways. So if you think about uh, what would, you know, a, a doctor or doctor when I say, you know, somebody, you know, from anatomy, etc. If they were to break down the body and what will they basically find, right, in, inside the body. So I'm sure you are all familiar with all this, right? Water and, and all the other things like calcium, phosphate, etc. So that basically makes us bag of chemicals. And somebody's put something. Yeah. In stanza of people taking rebirth. Yes, Nishad Prabhu. That is, I think, one of the answers. Now, I think the, the key question for all of us, and I think the reason we all are gathered here is, I don't think we all believe this completely that we are just a bag of chemicals otherwise or i mean maybe maybe i think four people said that you know we are bag of chemicals so maybe for them there is value add i think for the rest uh, this would be an academic session not transforming so much so i think what is birth where do we come from all these questions actually have been you know here what is death where do we go from here then the discussion about life after death whether it is like you know it's a fact or fiction so hopefully you know we'll we'll shed some light on this particular topic today and then we'll take the you know other topics maybe later on now the other question which actually i would ask you all and uh, you know some of you already know the answer is like actually have you ever thought about you know like inside you how many people are living inside you are you the only one living or there is multiple personalities like personalities not those split personality types so let us launch another poll this is an easy one won't take a lot of your time and this is the last poll by the way so no more polls after this Yes, one, four, one, four, one, four, one, four. A lot of people saying one, some people saying four. I think we've, I've got only 14 responses out of 20 people. So others, please put in your feedback. Okay, so the, the, the answer or at least the, the consensus is one body at a time. Awesome. Yes, Prabhu. So I think so we've got one, right? And uh, which is the majority. So uh, yeah, let's see what, what is the answer Bhagavad Gita actually has to say. So we'll come to the, to the answer which Bhagavad Gita is saying. Now, you know what basically defines a pencil? Would anybody want to volunteer? Or I think maybe I think I'll stop asking volunteers. Uh, uh, yeah, I think Vishalji, uh, Vishay here. 
So I think the body, the wooden body, first of all defines the outer part of himself. The ability to write, I think, defines the quality of himself. I think these two should be the main factors behind saying any object to the pencil. Absolutely, absolutely right. So I think the primary quality of pencil actually or, or the reason why pencil is known is for the for the lead you know graphite inside it correct and uh, while we all only see the outer covering the key characteristic of the or the quality of the pencil is is ability to write so that is just again i'm just using all this you know dumb examples to make the point you know clear and erasable right right that's that's true then i think let us think about this situation so there was a you know very rare you know parrot uh, you know which which was a very favorite parrot of of a lady and she really loved the you know the the bird and you know uh, kept her you know kept the bird nicely and you know she used to give very nice you know food etc to the to the bird for many times but then you know she bought a golden cage for the bird out of love and she started focusing on the cage a lot and you know keeping this cage you know shiny and clean she spent most of the time on the cage while the the bird actually you know starved and died inside so that's another example of you know misidentification and that is the hazard of misidentification so if we misidentify you know with ourselves in in like in the story of you know cage and bird then that's going to be very dangerous for all of us now if so this i think we know this right like you heard this not know this in the sense that i am not the temporary body i am the spirit soul this i think in every you know bhagavad gita class you would actually uh, see that and, uh, uh, and and this is the crux of all the spiritual teachings now today we are trying like why should we believe this that is i think the question you know we are like raising today and trying to answer today now i think the answer which i have got from you all i think it seems that you know some of like most of us you know believe that there is something you know but what is what exactly it is we'll, we'll just discuss that now what is the proof for the existence of the soul so we know that there is this body because we can see the body it's visible it's in front of us but how do we you know know that there is you know beyond something beyond that so let us see what bhagavad gita is actually trying to say so second chapter 13th verse you know starts with dehi no asmin yatha dehe komaram yovanam jara tata dehantara praptir dhiras tatrana muyati now what is actually meant by that is internal reincarnation of the body that the body actually moves from boyhood to adolescence to young age and then to old age so it anyways passes you know this cycle within one life the whole body actually changes there is something which remains you know which is permanent and unchanged so that is that is number 1 then i think in the same chapter second chapter verse 22 which is here that talks about the external reincarnation which is vasham sijirnani yatha vihaya navani grahanati naro parani tatha shariraani vihaya jirna anyani sanyati navani dehi so this gives example of uh, like we throw away the old torn clothes right and we take new garments similarly the the soul 
also leaves the old dilapidated bodies and takes up new bodies to jirna hone ke baad you know once the the sharir become jirna then dehi which is basically here the atma it goes into a new body so this is as per bhagavad gita and there are i am sure you know there are many many verses which refer to like which basically talks about the qualities of the soul it talks about the you know how soul is very uh, you know fantastic difficult to you know con- you know inconceivable and all that but let's stick to this too for the time being and move on to see how the science or how basically we get in a contemporary you can say proof or evidence to understand this verses of bhagavad gita about the soul so now there are many many discussions on this i have only keeping three here there are so many other you know discussion which one can have <clears throat> just say that i think this is this is one the sound is on the right this and the tension of this coming to yeah sorry so one is regression then there is near death experience and there is then past life memories so these are you know this is something which we can perceive through our existing you know this five senses and then we can use our own reasoning to think about the soul so regression is uh something you know which basically uh, i i i don't know how many of you are already aware of regression is based all this you know some psychiatrist take their patient back you know into their you know their younger you know life or basically early life to to you know to solve some of you know difficult ailments which they may be facing so there are many books again on regression i have read dr brian wis who is basically talked about a patient uh, catherine and uh, where he does regression and regression was is is actually a regular you know like signs or you know accepted uh, treatment uh, uh, or you know line of treatment for a lot of patients but in that particular case uh, catherine went into previous life of hers and started talking about something you know uh, which was not related to the current life and then she also actually started you know like at least in you know in the book etc she encountered some form of you know masters in her you know life like after death so after she died in one life and as she was taking birth in the new life in between she encountered some master and the masters gave her lot of messages and wisdom which exactly conforms to what is given in bhagavad gita and in if you guys want you can read that many lives many masters book also and uh, the the and and the master also told lot of things about the doctor himself the doctor brian ways about his personal life how his son died and how his son actually ha- was a very rare case of you know uh, uh, rare case of uh, yeah i think rare yeah very powerful book and i think that was my starting of my spiritual journey uh because i was extremely skeptical about our religious books at least to start with uh but then yeah that that really helped me you know cross lot of uh, you know my own you know, skepticism on on this so yeah so that was that, that was one so that that regression technique is one way where we we've, we've seen many people going back to their previous lives but it's a questionable technique the reason is that you know the patient is still here and you are trying to access somebody's memory which could be faulty or you know whatever you know you can make up or they can be imagination or they can be going to subconscious whatever could be there so that that technique generally is questionable but i think again the point i was taking away was that the, the messages from masters were exactly you know similar to what you know our scriptures are already saying and it's very difficult for by the way christians to accept you know past life next life because there you know the, the you know the, the christianity doesn't believe in rebirth like similarly you know islam also doesn't believe in rebirth 
so yeah so that was that was one technique the other one is out of body experiences or near death experience now this particular field uh, is also being you know researched by lot of doctors lot of stories are there some you know 2000 3000 stories even doctor one doctor alone has done then uh, you know there is so so dr sabon actually was the the pioneer he started 1970s and he was you know very skeptic rejected many out of body claims and then slowly slowly he found some you know uh, uh, genuine cases of nde so what is nde or out of body is that the the patient or the person actually sees something i mean his own body or her own body and also experiences uh, uh or narrates basically experiences which he, he or she wouldn't have actually known so i mean there is a technique right you know which they use to remove all the uh, all the fraud cases but uh, so there is like so there is a there is a book by dr kenneth and ring uh, sorry kenneth ring and sharon on blind cases of you know like patients who were blind by birth and they talking about near death experience so there is a patient you know called vicky umi peg and uh, she basically uh, was one of the one of the case of of dr ring i mean eventually they basically uh, interviewed her and so she revealed lot of you know interesting things after Of, of her experience of you know uh, near death experience so she was actually stuck by uh, by in, in an accident and she was you know basically in coma uh, or basically clinically dead that was the point then if you really want to uh, you want a serious you know look at uh, nde definitely watch the tedx by anita mohan so very very like very transforming story i mean even if you don't believe in nde you just listen to the story uh, her story so i'll just quickly tell because there so many stories today we have but she was diagnosed actually with uh, uh, i think uh, with some lymphoma actually right so cancer and she actually was battling with cancer for four years and she was in end stage you know uh, in 2006 and february 2006 uh, she was like the doctors in and she was based in hong kong so like she was in hong kong and doctors ex, you know they said that you have only few hours left because her organs started actually failing the lungs were filled with fluid you know and all her muscles deteriorated etc so it was like just matter of few hours and doctor said that you can call your relative whoever you know you want to call now and uh, uh, and she actually so so she she started having this nde and uh, she felt that you know she is aware of everything suddenly you know she is aware in the sense she felt connected to everything it's like you know whether you call it you know radio waves or wifi you know channels or whichever she felt connected she was actually experiencing everybody's emotions emotions and like doctor's dilemma their his relative his husband she could actually she was also aware of you know that his brother who was in india and he was trying to you know catch a flight so she suddenly became aware of lot of things and uh, so she i mean it's a long story actually of her and i'm sure you if you want to watch you can watch you know that later but the most astonishing thing which is again very difficult to prove clinically like doctors have no answer to that is in 5 days so she had got tumors of the size of lemons you know from the skull to you know abdomen arms and you know chest everywhere actually she had developed but in the in the in the you know in in by the end of it in 5 days after she had this nde and where she experienced you know like the connection with her dead father connection with her dead you know friend and uh, uh, and she like again I, she had lot of you know experiences to tell but she felt you know grateful about lot of things she felt the un- unconditional love in that particular period or exchange and uh, she was actually kind of given a choice in in that you know that like she felt that she had the choice of coming back to the body or you know going forward 
and uh, she was assured that if she comes back she will have a better body and in 5 days 70% of her tumors actually you know disappeared in 5 weeks the entire like there was no cancer in her body like clinically proven story so and uh, and not in india by the way so you know you can't fudge records so easily to just to prove a particular point so so that is that is one story of nd which is you know so the reason i mentioned this story there are so many you know which talks about the patient actually floating above you know and telling so many things about the about what was happening inside or about the hospital so one of the actually patient act, talks about that there is a tennis shoe you know in one of the balcony uh, which actually is not visible to anybody from the ground you have to go to the uh, the topmost floor and uh, there only you know you could like from the terrace only you could actually see that and the terrace was locked for 6 months so there were many such incidences uh, and uh, so this is one then dr eben alexander again he had he went into coma and uh, you know he came out of coma after 7 days he had also a lot of you know experiences to say so this is one i would say strong evidence that there is something beyond this gross body which we have and and therefore we need to consider the probability that at the death of the body we don't die it's not like end of life in that sense for us we just take another body this is again one of the proof and there is again my point is there is something beyond the body it's not only the brain which is you know driving the uh <clears throat> our body then i think the most startling ones were the past life memories where which is absolutely irrefutable you know even you, even if you use scientific you know methods of analyzing any topic you know so there there also there is absolutely because in case of nd also one can say that the same body correct how does it matter you know same body maybe somebody got cured i mean i don't believe in that i'm just saying somebody got cured or whatever so there can be many skeptical views around ndes but the past life memory cases they are physically distant right there is no medium through which memories could have been transferred to the other individual and some of this actually happened after a very very long period of time so uh so that is that is very very fascinating and therefore i think this one this particular three or four incidences which you know we will be talking they hopefully will you know help you understand even better any questions sorry so far on 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 what we just discussed okay so we'll move on then uh so first a uh, case study we will take if of you know james leninger uh the this boy actually was born in 1998 texas you know dallas and uh, at the very early age you know he started actually talking about uh, airplanes and he only played with airplanes and uh, then and he he keeps talking and he had this nightmares that the plane is crashing that his plane is crashing and he would basically have very difficult time adjusting to that and then his father uh, uh he would keep asking him questions so because he keep making making names that you know I was a pilot I used to do this and so he he had like so many things to you know say and this is at the age of you know 1 to 2 years this is not you know after going to school or or something like he uh, he couldn't have any exposure to the to the defense or airlines that way so if the father used to ask you know what kind of you know airplane you know you would you would fly and he would say i used to fly you know corsair and uh, uh, and then he would like then then he would say okay where were you you know where, where would you fly that and and the boy you know very little again two year old boy is, is talking he would say that you know uh, i mean i was at, at natoma bay and uh, and the father would say that that sounds very japanese and 
this guy who say no no it's american and the father would you know ask him and then would do a you know google or confirm with you know whatever sources he had to find out uh, whether you know he is making the right claims and he made all the right claims and and yeah and and natama bay anyways you know was the name of the aircraft carrier you know which was used in second world war then i think one day they were going through some you know uh, uh, some uh, like maps etc and you know he basically kept he, he came across the one of the japanese islands iwo jima and uh, then the boy said the daddy this is the place where you know my plane was shot down and uh, and then again the father checked that in 1945 actually natoma was you know there in iowa you know iowa jima and uh, then so i think so he was basically continuously you know uh, giving more and more evidences of the knowledge which he had and at the age of 3 started drawing and he would draw basically planes and and the battles and he basically named you know planes as wild cats and corsairs and he would call the japanese planes as zeeks and betties and and when when he was asked all these questions he would you know like he had all the answer like he is like he was not doing some imaginary you know work he said that the boy planes were fighters and the girl planes were bombers and once again you know this guy the father went and checked and the the father was a devout christian so he was not willing to consider any possibility of rebirth that was out of you know mind he was just trying to think about ki can my you know suddenly the nightmares actually has to reduce right he was like only looking to you know uh, find a solution for for his son's uh, you know ailment and and i think he, and then then james started talking about lot of things which are very very peculiar about you know like the corsair corsair he used to say that you know he used, used to get flat tires all the time and you know whenever you on take off they would turn to left so he will say so such typical things which only a pilot who could have you know used corsair at, would have told and uh, he even actually you know so he was he you know very soon he became you know kind of uh, fascination for for media and he was put on you know air and when the original corsair was brought to him he would you know even point to the to the you know tail hook which is generally in, only in the planes in, in the naval planes uh, and he also talked about uh his partner's name uh, i am forgetting the part jake or something and uh, and all these guys that went about and they did lot of like the father did lot of research uh and and found out you know about the that there was there was a guy called uh, what was the name of that guy james his name was also james in previous life uh, and uh, which uh, you know who basically uh, died in the world war 2 and he had a friend called jake uh, like in the friend like the partner uh, pilot called jake and uh, so lot of lot of his, and he was basically aired on abc and and lot of uh, other tv you know channels etc so this is so one this is one case now this here the the this thing is far you know the number of years imagine 45 you know 50 years after i don't know what he was doing in between you know because that was not known to even him uh but somebody talks about the memories or 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 the facts from the life of somebody else's where there is no physical connection possible so this is something you know outside of the body then the second case we have 20 more 25 more minutes this is about naresh redas so this boy was born in 1981 uh in april 1981 he claimed to have died in june 1980 out of you know at the age of 25 in a in a road accident now this was studied by dr antonio mills and uh, who was basically researcher uh, you know uh, at university of virginia now so this is the, the reason i picked this case was this is again a hindu muslim case which is very very difficult for either family to accept and therefore the risk of you know fraudulent claim is is actually generally low in such cases and it was anyways you know uh, researched uh, thoroughly by by lot of people you know they there after so this boy he was like you know he was son of a average you know uh, person in in you know was born in uh, you know near bajnagar 
and uh, which was you know five kilometers from Kakori, and uh, he started you know doing you know like namaz at the age of two, and uh, uh, so that was like the first thing, and he that was like one one particular thing, and then there used to be a fakir which used to come to this guy Naresh's house. He used to come, you know, he's been coming for many, many years. And Naresh was particularly attracted to this guy, uh, this Fakir. And he would actually follow the Fakir, you know, to few, you know, like steps, few houses. And he would always ask the Fakir to take him to home. Now, so this, his, ins- his insistence of going back to, you know, uh, to the house of Fakir actually kept going up. And then, you know, one day the, they decided that let us, you know, take him and let's see if he basically gets satisfied. So I think at the age of six, they go, you know, they go to the to the town of previous birth, which was Kakori. So this was not very, very far, you know, in terms of distance, but very different in terms of, you know, the way things, uh, the religions, etc. So he, he was identified, he identified himself as Mushir Ali Shah. Okay who was like son of, uh, you know, Heather Ali and Heather Ali is the Fakir, by the way. He, the Heather Ali was actually the Fakir and, uh, and he, he went and identified so many people in the family and uh, he was actually a horse cart, you know, driver, uh, you know, who, who actually died in an accident and this guy, Naresh Redas actually, you know, uh, he actually had you know uh, some issue in the uh, in the in the in the chest and uh, later you know the Heather Ali etc they you know they, they noticed that their son Mushir, Mushir Ali also died out you know he had a wound a, a, you know fatal you know wound uh, at the at the chest and uh, so so th- there are many things actually so he basically talked about uh, a lot of people actually gathered near, you know, Fakir's house when, when Naresh went there. And uh, there I think he recognized uh, not only his own brothers, uh, but he also counted that, you know, that that you have, you know, six, you know, I have six brothers, five sisters and, uh, sorry, five brothers, six sisters. And uh, so did, that was actually true uh, for the time, you know, when, when he was, uh, till the time he was alive. Then he actually asked about his, you know, like the younger brother and he also basically correctly identified, you know, out of the five suitcase, which one was Mushir Ali's, you know, suitcase. Then, uh, then he also, I think, you know, recognized somebody, you know, uh, like the wife of a person named Zahid and asked her that whether have you returned that 300 rupees back to, you know, to my father. Uh, and. Uh, and similarly, he basically recounted such, you know, incidences uh, of the people gathered there, which, you know, only Mushir could have known and not this six year old child, you know, would have known so many details correctly. And then when he was basically about to go, the father gave him five rupees, uh, you know, the family gave him five rupees, you know, on departure. And he said, you know, how can you send me off like this? You, will you not give me tea and egg, which was Mushir Ali's favorite, you know, when, when he was around. And uh, in Hindus, of course, you know, like this family was vegetarian Hindus, which did not eat, you know, egg and all. So he had no, you know, like previous taste of that. Again, I think physically, you know, impossible to be there. But, and he recounted so many other um, details correctly. Now, quickly moving to our last case study of the of the day, Deep Kapadia. So Deep Kapadia, he was born to a Gujarati family, you know, in 1979, very close to us, Borivili, Mumbai. And this is the case which I know, you know, firsthand because when I was attending uh, Bhagavad Gita seminar, you know, somewhere in 2005, that's when, you know, he actually came to speak about his own story. So he was called in, you know, invited to talk about, you know, what actually happened to him. So at age of two, he started speaking Marwari uh, and he used to complain, you know, to the family that your house is so small, you know, my bathroom is bigger than your house. And uh, so all those things he started doing and he actually repeatedly developed high fever and he had swelling in his knees. 
so that was the reason why family started consulting doctor so so they actually went to doctors and then doctors they, when they couldn't find any cure then you know they kept escalating it and there was dr mehtani who basically confirmed that you know this guy is at, at two years age his iq is you know that of a 10 year old while on the eeg there is no you know like the brain activity showing normal result then dr mehtani consulted to dr dramakant keni you know who was a you know parapsychologist at i think bombay hospital or somewhere and then dr keni actually declared that you know this can be a case of reincarnation so therefore let us investigate more and then dr keni started investigating asking probing questions to deep about where were you who were you what were you doing and that's when you know he started telling that you know i was pannalal agarwal and i was you know a security officer of city palace of udaipur i was very close to maharaj fateh singh who was uh, um, yeah maharaj fateh pratap and uh, so that was so he actually he, he gave a lot of details so dr keni actually decided that let us take him to udaipur and uh, but they didn't tell him they didn't tell deep about udaipur they said that okay uh, they are going to nadwara and which was very common you know in gujarati families to go to nadwara and uh, they went some of the news leaked uh, and uh, went to you know like media houses so chitralekha which was one of the gujarati magazine they wanted to cover the story and therefore they said that we will follow with you know we'll come with you guys and uh, so but the parent didn't want you know any publicity you know because they thought you know this will be bad for their kid but then i think chitralekha editor convinced them that if there is no real story we will leave it don't worry and uh, now then i think they went to udaipur uh and the moment they reach udaipur this guy deep you know who was i think around 3 or 4 years old at that time uh he started recognizing lot of things in in udaipur you know victoria stand fateh memorial city palace and he basically you know could even you know guide the 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 road back to his house and at his house he also again recalled his you know past food habits and uh, So I think the, at first the family of this Pannalal Agarwal, they felt very threatened that you know this is you know because he had decent property, they felt that you know this somebody has come to claim the property uh, using all these tactics. Then, so but then a lot of details you know he started telling about the family which was not known to many and the the son actually asked him that you know you tell me one thing and then I will accept you you know that that you are real is that. where do we where do my father hide you know the gun keep the gun and that was only known to him and his son and uh, so he basically went you know like up, some upstairs you know it was on on the higher floor and he identified the place where and he opened that place to show him that this this is where the gun is uh, so that that was i think one very shocking evidence even for the son then one thing he was doing you know like he was trying to locate something which was which he couldn't do that he was saying that there was a you know there was a uh, there was a door he was trying to find the door but you know maybe after his death they covered the door so they basically it was a temple which they they shut the door from one end and they opened it to the other end which actually was confirmed you know by their accountant uh, later that this is you know actually is right the door was here when he was around and he knew many many secrets actually and then he took them to you know the museum and there also he actually uh, like he sh- he asked the the security guy you know uh, the, the the museum guys to remove a, a you know life size large life size frame hung on a wall which actually was you know not removed and no like no, nobody knew about why, why to remove so on his insistence they removed it and then he showed them a secret path you know from there to uh, to the palace and and a door you know to escape from the palace also which was straight you know outside of the the city and there then again he asked for the kerosene fans that where are the kerosene fans and uh, and nobody in the in the museum knew about kerosene fans because nobody you know imagined that there is would be a kerosene fan but i think in the british time they used to use the kerosene fan there were three kerosene fans fans and he told them how to operate uh, those kerosene fans and they are still you know at the museum now 
and the guides etc would refer to Pannalal Agarwal or whoever no deep to have identified this so this was you know once again a mm. uh, uh, very very fascinating mm. story and this is again i mean this is this does not you know we know the person also i you know hopefully one day we'll have him <laughs> you know on our call also uh, but this was the other other piece of evidence what it again proves is that the body dies body gets cremated burn fire becomes ashes right but there is something which is inside the body which does not die does not you know uh, basically is not burned by the fire doesn't get destroyed and moves on and and i think we've seen many like we've seen three but i can you know put 50 here uh, but this is just to make the point that we are not this body we are something beyond this body right so that is this is the this is the scientific you know evidence of why we should not accept this body as the as the be all and all of our life and we need to seriously consider the possibility of next life which is where i think we need to think about how we are living what are we accumulating in this life what can we take to the next life and what will be left behind right because any wise person you know would accumulate something which you know one can keep it for much longer period so if i tell you that you know you invest in this particular asset class and it will give you returns till 10 years and after that it becomes zero so you might say yeah good i'll enjoy this 10 years i don't care what happens after you know after 10 years but if you are 30 year old i think you would worry about that if you are 40 year old then also you will worry about that only if you are 90 year old you will say okay let me enjoy do reverse mortgage but uh, so that is that is one i think key takeaway uh, it was this was the turning point for me to take spirituality seriously because this is this was very very uh, shocking at least you know when i when i actually went through all this you know studies any questions till now